Peck. Uh, I don't know how many of you have uh, seen the movie The Butler uh, with Oprah Winfrey. I have not. I will be perfectly honest. I have not. Uh, but joining us right now is a man who uh, has and has uh, written a great piece uh, picked up by Drudge and uh, causing uh, quite a stir, and rightfully so. Richard A. Epstein, the Peter and uh, Kirsten Bedford Senior Fellow at the Hoover Institute, joins us live in studio. He thought it was radio. Yeah, he he left his tuxedo at home. Actually, I left my tie at home. But we'll, <laughs> we'll just have to make it. It's do. great to have you here. It's you look fine. Nice. You look fine. Thank very you for nice coming to be up. Here. My okay, pleasure. so let's talk about this. Uh, in what way, as you say in your, your brilliant piece, uh, that the butler distorts race relations? How, how so? Well, let's first begin with the movie. It's yes. a movie which is an unparalleled success. Forrest Whitaker is a great actor. Um, how do we say it? Uh, my God, what is her name again? Um, Humph- o- Oprah Winfrey? Oprah Winfrey, yeah, 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 slip of the mind. She's a fine actress. The supporting cast is great. So his drama, it's fine. The question, though, is what it tells you about race relations in the United States. And in terms of the objectives that uh, were set out in the early 1960s and compared to the state of the world as it existed in the mid-1950s, Uh, when the movie begins, which with a Little Rock confrontation. Uh, The whole situation had completely turned over by the time that Reagan had become president and left. And it was a bipartisan kind of consensus that the sort of rigid segregationist attitudes that existed in the South could no longer survive. And the real butler who was involved in this particular case, uh, a man named Eugene Allen, had a really very different view of the world. He had started low, ended high, was great friends with all the presidents who had been in office, and didn't leave to go on political protest rounds but left because he was retiring at age 67. Uh, When they do this movie, what they do is they add in an extra son to the fictional butler who becomes a protest leader who's sort of a little bit like Zelig. Every time there's trouble, he's there, whether it's in Nashville or Alabama and Oakland and so forth. And there's a decided downbeat cast that there's only superficial change in the way in which the United States has been organized. But deep down, a lot of this sort of unconscious stains of racism still remain. And I think the distortion about this underestimates the huge transformation in social attitudes between the two times. I was old enough to remember Brown v. Board of Education. I was 11 at the time. And, you know, Mr. Greenberg, my sixth grade teacher, said this is an extraordinary event in American life, a transformation of all that went behind it. And somehow or other, the level of the achievement seems to be lost. And it also, I think, is lost for yet another reason, which is uh, one of the things about the early civil rights movement is it was designed to remove barriers to segregation. And as a legal task, getting rid of a barrier just means to get rid of something, and it's pretty easy to implement. Trying to do the positive agenda, create jobs and create perfect schools and so forth, is much more difficult to do. And so the difficulty that the civil rights movement has, along with all Americans, is that after you get the great low-hanging fruit, what do you do for your second act? And it's much more difficult to achieve. And Martin Luther King had no particular expertise on labor relationships or public education and so forth. He was a visionary. He was a man who made the first huge and vital step in American transformation, for which he's duly revered. But the second stage comes harder, and I think what this movie starts to suggest is that there's something wrong with the way in which society has worked, rather than to recognize that these are really very, very serious problems that elude simple solutions, or to put it in more technical terms, de jure, that is changing things as a matter of law relatively easy. But de facto, changing the complex patterns of social interactions is really much harder to come by. And, 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 and we're talking to, uh, obviously, a very brilliant Richard Epstein of the uh, Hoover Institute here on the Steve Malzberg Show about his piece, The Butler Distorts Race Relations. Uh, in addition to taking these complexities and trying to put them in simplistic uh, uh, light, uh, they also misrepresent what actually happened. And you, you alluded to some of that. But, for instance, uh, uh, the, 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 in the movie, he watches uh, uh, his mother's uh, boss rape his mother, but that he, but in reality, that never even happened. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, this was a hard knock story, and what they did is they uh, portrayed this as beginning on a plantation or a farm in Georgia in which this poor boy watches his mother raped and his father murdered in cold blood. And in fact, the uh, Eugene Allen character was a man who was born in Virginia and by dint of hard work worked his way up. And one of the things that you discover is that movies need drama and that life essentially is much more successful when the mundane turns out to work out the way in which you would. So to me, the huge transformation of the civil rights movement was uh, that it meant that people who engaged in hard work for themselves and for their families and for their friends could in fact rise up without the state coming back and beating them. I mean, you know, which could be the could have been the message. 
And it is a message that you want, but it, and it is certainly one of the messages, but it gets lost, I think, in the, uh, in the discussions later on, because it's somehow or other, when you do this, you don't see a guy who rises up, and in fact, they talk about wage differentials that probably didn't exist between white and black workers, and they make him as a man who can't make a promotion, whereas, in fact, Allen started not as a butler, but as a pantry boy. He started under Truman, and he ended up basically running the whole show under Reagan, and when he left office, he and Nancy had a great big heart to heart and a hug. Uh, the one thing that was true was he was actually invited as a guest to the state dinner uh, with his wife, the Oprah Winfrey character, and, and did go. And, you know, it was a wonderful event, but what it happened in the movie is that somehow or other this seems to be just a feint, and that the real great social grievances remain, and he becomes actually disillusioned by it after the fact. And I can't believe that anybody who's a butler and is invited to a state dinner would have that kind of level of latent resentment right. under these sorts. So, I mean, it has a kind of a slightly morose tone associated with it, which may be great drama, but I can assure you, great drama though it may be, it's not, I think, an accurate reflection of the distance to which we've come. And, you know, this is right on the agenda again today. We had the March on Washington, part two, 50 years later on Sunday, and we're going to hear the president and some other on big Wednesday. weeks on Wednesday. And, and not to interrupt, but I'm up against the clock, and I know yeah. that's going to be your next column. Yeah. And if, if, if you would allow us, I'd love to have you back on to talk about that uh, later in the week or next week. So thank you for stopping by. Uh, just a, a, a brilliant and analysis and uh, I learned a lot not, not having seen the movie and now uh, now I might want to go see it and look uh, for what you talked about that's Richard Epstein ladies and gentlemen check him out at the uh, Hoover Institute he where he is a senior